So we've talked about the outside of black holes enough. Now it's time to talk about the inside. What happens when you cross the event horizon and go into a black hole? Well, it is a tricky problem to work out. In fact, for years, they had no solution. The reason for this is that it's difficult to find coordinate systems that don't completely fall apart at the surface. Eventually, one was found. And that led us to some very fascinating discoveries. So before we dig into that, we have to ask ourselves, why is time special? We have four coordinates, right? three spatial coordinates and a time coordinate. In relativity, we often use the speed of light times time just to put them all into the same units. But why does time behave so much differently than the other three? Why do we have complete freedom to move in the x, y, and z directions, aside from the limitations of gravity, as well as you know walls and things like that? But we have no easy control over how quickly we move through time. Well, that comes out of the metric spaces. So we know about the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's something we can use to actually take a two-dimensional vector with components a and b and figure out the overall length, the magnitude c. If you have a three-dimensional vector, then the total distance also fits the same sort of pattern. That's not a hard geometric construction to put together. But when we're dealing with relativity, well, how do we set that up where x, and if you're moving not in the x-axis, but if you're moving in some other direction, potentially all three variables can take on different values according to who's measuring them. How do we decide the length of a vector? Well, Einstein realized as a direct result of the Lorentz transformations, that while this quantity, the x and y and z squared, add these up, that quantity will depend on the observer. But if you take your x, y, z, and square them, add the sum of those squares, and subtract c squared t squared, this quantity, which they call s, this is invariant. That is the interval. So everyone will, or everyone may disagree on the values of x and y and z and t. But this combination is invariant. Everybody will agree on what this calculation is, no matter what numbers they have along the way. Well, this minus sign is what separates time from space. That is the key. And that's where things start to get really weird inside a black hole. Because when you're doing it, in order to make things work, first of all, you don't measure things in x, y, z, and t coordinates. You keep your time, but then you set things up in what they call spherical coordinates. It's almost like you're using latitude and longitude. In fact, latitude and longitude are a spherical coordinate system with the assumed radius of the Earth. In a spherical coordinate system, you measure your distance from the origin, and you will have one angle, like longitude, that ranges from 0 to 180 degrees, or 0 to pi radians. And then you will have another one the theta or the latitude that goes from 0 to 360 or 0 to 2 pi. Well, when you are outside the black hole, time is the one that gets the negative sign when you square your vector. Once you're inside the black hole, it's not time that gets that negative sign, it's the radius. Inside a black hole, you can move backward and forward through time as easily as we can 
step side to side or jump up and down in the world that we have now. But our movement in that radial direction towards the center of the black hole becomes unstoppable and inevitable. So once you're in, you are drawn immediately and irrevocably towards the center. This is where things really start to break apart, especially when you can move back and forth in time. All of a sudden, the relationship between cause and effects breaks. If cause is allowed to come after the effect, then virtually all laws of physics, or physics completely collapse. But that is the kind of thing that can happen inside a black hole. So that is part of what happens. But another way to view it, let's take a look at our space-time. You may have seen wireframe images of space-time where with no black hole, you would have just a perfect grid. With a black hole, things change quite a bit because things start to move in and they're trapped inside this black hole. Everything goes in, even the lines that were trying to stay apart from it. So that you have this hole in space time. So mathematically, it looks like this. Now the question that we're gonna come across in part seven is what happens if your space-time is folded and you've got two black holes back to back. That is what we'll deal with in the seventh and final part of our lesson on black holes.